So good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to the second day of the uh, conf conference conceptual and methodological aspects of biomedical research. Uh, the conference is organized by the Institute of Philosophy of the Czech Academy of Sciences. My name is uh, Martin Zach, and I'm a PhD student uh, in philosophy based here in Prague, and I'm also the main organizer of this event. Uh, as explained in uh, uh, more details yesterday, uh, our conference has been greatly affected uh, by the public health uh, situation, which resulted in diverging from the original date and format of the conference and forced us to cancel the poster session. One of these uh, strange results uh, also concerns giving an introductory presentation to the conference on the second day rather than the first day of the event. So crazy times, of course. Um, let me start by saying a few words uh, about the structure of the program and also the intention behind organizing uh, an event like this. So we have uh, five invited speakers. Uh, Lucy Laplan is a CNRS researcher at the IHPST at Sorbonne and also at the uh, Cancer Center Gustav Rusi. She is the author of Cancer Stem Cells, uh, Philosophy and Therapies, published by the Harvard University Press. Uh, it's a book in which she argues that there are actually different ways to understand um, uh, stemness, and this has major implications for the kinds of experiments as well as therapeutic interventions one conducts. Uh, her work also appeared in journals such as Blood or Trends in Cancer. Barbara Osimani is uh, from the Faculty of Medicine, Polytechnic University of Marke. She is the holder of the uh, ERC starting grant entitled uh, Philosophy of Pharmacology, Safety, Statistical uh, Standards and Evidence Amalgamation. In her work, she utilizes uh, formal methods, including the Bayesian framework. She publishes both in philosophy and in science journals, and she has recently edited a volume on uncertainty in pharmacology Epistemology, Epistemology Methods and Decisions, uh, a book published by Springer. Uh, Anja Plutinsky, who gave her keynote talk uh, yesterday, is an associate professor of philosophy at the Department of Philosophy, Washington uh, University in St. Louis. In her work, she has predominantly focused on, the, on evolution and uh, cancer. Uh, this includes her research on the history of the Cancer Genome Atlas project and the topic of precision oncology. And in 2018, uh, Oxford University Press published her uh, book uh, called Explaining Cancer, Finding Order in Disorder. After working as a clinical pathologist, uh, Jaromir Sramek from the Institute of Histology and Embryology uh, of the Charles University in Prague currently focuses uh, on the quantitative uh, analysis of histopathological uh, changes associated with uh, the metabolic syndrome. And as the president of the Czech uh, Society for Skeptics called Sisyphos, he is publicly active and vocal with respect to the issues uh, concerning medical practices from the point of view of the evidence-based medicine movement. Finally, we have uh, Jacob Stegenga uh, from the Department of History and Philosophy of Science, uh, University of Cambridge. He is probably best known for his uh, research on the effectiveness of medical interventions, uh, which he summarized in his 2018 book called uh, Medical Nihilism, published by the Oxford University Press. He's also the author of an introductory textbook on philosophy of medicine called Care and Cure, uh, which was published by uh, Chicago University Press also in 2018. Um, and his current research deals with the sciences of sexual desire. So we have also four additional uh, speakers, uh, invited speakers, announced as scientific guest speakers. Uh, and these include uh, Mary uh, Alberic Jorda from the Laboratory of Hematooncology of the Institute of Molecular Genetics of the Czech Academy of Sciences, Sonia Hubáčková from the Laboratory of Molecular Therapy uh, of the Institute of Biotechnology of the Czech Academy of Sciences, Michal Šmahel uh, from the Laboratory of Immunotherapy from the Faculty of Science of the Charles University in Prague and also uh, Biosef, which is a, a, a center, um, a joint center from the Czech Academy of Sciences and uh, Charles University. And finally, Jiří Vejmalka uh, from the Department of Internal Medicine of the Tomajer Hospital and the Third Faculty of Medicine, uh, Charles University in, in, in Prague. 
So I would like to um, thank, thank all our invited speakers for kindly accepting the invitation and also for agreeing to participate in this strange online format. Now, um, last year, together with my colleagues from the Institute of Philosophy of the Czech Academy of Sciences, we organized the 16th uh, International Congress of Logic, Methodology and Philosophy of Science and Technology, uh, which took place here in Prague. The theme of the Congress was uh, bridging across uh, cultures, across academic cultures. And in conceiving the current uh, conference, this theme became prominent again. Of course, this needs some unpacking. Uh, for the most part, this is a so-called uh, philosophy of science conference, broadly understood. And many philosophers of science deal with issues concerning actual scientific practice, and many of these philosophers form an integral part of a number of international societies that gather researchers with uh, such interests. Uh, the so Society for uh, Philosophy of Science in Practice, uh, SPSP for short, puts great emphasis on the need to study scientific practices of past and present and promotes uh, history and philosophy of science as an integrated discipline while inviting the participation of practicing scientists, engineer, engineers and policymakers. There is also the International Philosophy of Medicine Roundtable, which is uh, an open group of philosophers, uh, clinicians, epidemiologists, social scientists, statisticians and bioethicists that share an interest in philosophical issues pertaining to medical research and medicine in general. Uh, other major societies that aim to integrate science uh, with philosophy are uh, societies such as the Philosophy in Biology and Medicine Network, Phil in Biomed for short, uh, which regu regularly organizes events with some of the most prominent scientists and philosophers. Uh, similarly, the International Society for History, Philosophy and Social Studies of Biology has a long history of organizing large conferences uh, with the attendance of both philosophers and uh, scientists. With the, growth, with the growth of specialization, it is increasingly difficult to keep track of what is going on in one's uh, own research field, not to mention, of course, in closely related fields. Communication across even neighboring fields can often be challenging because of differences in respective backgrounds or research methods. It becomes even more apparent as soon as one moves further away from the set of fields that one is most familiar with. This is true for scientific domains as much as it is true for uh, philosophical subdisciplines such as philosophy of biology or, or philosophy of medicine, which may also uh, at least to some extent to benefit from growing cross communication. So the intention behind this event is to bring together researchers and practitioners with various backgrounds and to put a spotlight on all these approaches and hopefully to learn from each other in the process. I think it is not only interesting, but also extremely important to interact with researchers from other disciplines and that many philosophers actually have important things to say and ways to contribute just as uh, just as science and medical practice has a lot to offer to philosophers. Now, I admit that the idea of a fruitful cross-communication um, across fields as different as biomedical sciences, medical practice, and philosophy may, at first glance, seem perhaps a bit too abstract, uh, at least to some of you. And although maybe appealing in theory, uh, more must be said about how exactly this should work in practice. Well, so one way, uh, of course, not the only way, but one way in which such integration might proceed is by writing uh, research papers in collaboration. So there is actually a, a plethora of examples of such successful collaboration between scientists and philosophers with the, with the relevant expertise that has led to joint publications in some of the uh, most prestigious scientific journals. And here you can uh, see just a small example, so just a small sample of selected examples. It includes a recent influential opinion uh, piece, uh, this one detailing, um, detailing the actual impact of some, of some philosophy on science. Uh, there are also research papers that introduce a novel theory um, or um, uh, clarify an important concept or otherwise contribute to scientific issues, uh, including uh, uh, policy guidelines. Um, 
as you as you might see, uh, a number of our invited speakers uh, have engaged in exactly this practice and uh, are exemplified here on this slide. Um, I could not resist but to, to also mention the Czech context here. In particular, uh, my colleague Tomáš Marvan, um, uh, who is also my boss, uh, as it happens, um, and his, his uh, work on philosophy of neuroscience um, and on the theory of consci consciousness also exhibits, exhibits, uh, exhibits this, uh, um, some aspects of this practice. Um, so it is also the case that uh, scientists, so it's not only that philosophers together with scientists publish in scientific journals, but it's also the case that scientists themselves, uh, either together with philosophers or on their own, um, including some of the most prominent sci scientists, uh, publish in philosophy of science journals. And again, this is just a, a teaser really, not an exhaustive list at all. Um, and as you can see, uh, also the selection is sort of uh, biased toward the biological rather than the med medical side of things, uh, but that's just uh, um, uh, sort of a, a way to, to look at things, not, uh, as, I, as I said, it's not uh, intended to be an exhaustive list. Um, so although a small minority, uh, some philosophers also work uh, directly in scientific labs or medical departments, and uh, some also run experiments or otherwise engage in field work. So Lucy Laplan is uh, uh, one of the uh, shining examples of this uh, practice. Um, and to use other uh, uh, sort of a biased example, I can refer to my own uh, experience of working for a few months uh, at the Immunoconcept Lab in Bordeaux which is an immunological unit uh, consisting of uh, one philosophical and five uh, scientific groups. And that's me, uh, in case you can't tell. Um, and um, all this uh, should hopefully illustrate that the project of uh, integrating science, medical practice and philosophy is not a sort of a naive plan for the unspecified future, but an already existing and blossoming endeavor. And my hope, uh, my, my, my wish uh, is that uh, hopefully similar efforts will also become, become more prominent here in the Czech Republic. Finally, uh, let me express gratitude to all of you for participating in this conference. And I hope that, uh, I hope that you will all benefit from listening to the talks.